Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to another Tottenham Hotspur Transfer Talk live episode. We're going to be talking about everything you need to know about Spurs transfers in the next hour or so. Uh, talking defenders at Milinkovic, Botman, Militao and uh, Kim Min Jae and uh, even more at Milan Skriniar. We've Marcel Sabitzer, Danny Ings, Christian Eriksen, Deli Ali. Uh, all the Spurs news you could want. If you're watching on the replay, check the description down below and there'll be timestamps for every single one of these discussions and stories. And if you are new to the channel, smash that subscribe button, smash the like button. Uh, hit join if you want to become a new member and check out Charlie and David's channels in the link uh, in the description below as well. And let's uh, let's dive straight into things. Uh, let's let's not mess about. Uh, the first story we're going to talk about today is from Lyle Thomas of Sky Sports, who was on the last word on Spurs podcast. He said Tottenham will definitely revisit the Milan Skriniar deal in the future uh, when they have funds to complete such a deal. I think every Spurs fan is in a similar boat. We'd love to see Skriniar in a Spurs jersey. Uh, we know it's not going to happen this window for financial reasons and for the fact that Skriniar. Uh, is happy at Inter Milan and he's getting game time. Uh, but David, we'll start with you. Milan Skriniar potentially in the summer, maybe even uh, further down the line. But when Spurs have the funds, we're going to we're going to try and get this one done. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to happen, Matty. I think the relationship over the Ericsson deal between Inter and Tottenham is a bit frosty <laughs> at the minute. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. To be honest with you, I'm kind of out of the Skriniar boat now. I'm all in, two okay. feet jumped in into the into the Milinkovic boat. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, in fairness, he's converted me, and I, I knew about him. I, I didn't know about him before Marcelo started bringing it, in, bringing it up. <laughs> he but lost him I wasn't the first one to bring it up. Marcelo was, and for me, look, Skriniar, look, he, it'd be a good signing to come in, Matt. He, he, he's exactly what we need. But the fact that Milinkovic will do the same job, he's cheaper. We can use the money to reinvest elsewhere than what we would end up paying for Skriniar. Charlie, what do you make of the Skriniar news? Yeah, look, Skriniar, as I've said for a while now, he's always been a player that I really like. A brilliant, brilliant defender. I think he's one of the best in the world, if you ask me. I think, look, it was gutting to see Tottenham not get that deal done. I think he'd definitely be a player that would instantly improve us. I think he'd take our defence 10 times better. However, as, as the report says, I can understand, yeah, it's not going to be possible in this window, potentially in the summer um, when it's more likely. Um, but if not, then I'm definitely on the Milenkovic boat because I've looked at Milenkovic and sort of when Marcelo was telling me about oh, him, he, he, I've watched a bit of him. I've watched a few clips of him. He looks... I, I, know, I know you can't judge a lot of YouTube compilations, but I looked into some more detailed stuff and he, he looks a brilliant defender, Milenkovic. He's big, if you, he's fast. If, he can play at right back as well, actually, as well. Something yeah, else. Yeah, he's a good player, bro. I'm just saying, like, if you... If you can watch the, you know, the Serie A at any time, go watch Milinkovic, man. I'm telling you, he's quality. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, a, he's, a, he, he's he, I think he's one of the best center backs in the Serie A. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, 100%. It, it, it's just sadly, you know what I mean? Like, Florentina is in, like... They lost is 5 million. Yeah. yeah, like, they're not the best, Yeah. Yeah, as they're well not with the Milenkovic, I, I, I've got, I heard some information as well that he's actually got a 22 million release clause in his contract as well, Milenkovic. Yeah, he's or, the perfect. And he has two years left, so he's look running out of contract soon. He has that release clause. I think. Look for the money he's going for. They're looking at 22 million. I think Milenkovic is definitely someone we really have to seriously consider because, um, as, as you said, the finances for someone like Skriniar is unlikely. So I think we have to look at someone like Milenkovic with that price mm -hmm. and with the value you'll get him. A top top defender in Milenkovic. I just, I just think that the Skriniar the Skriniar deal has run its course. I think if the, if we were out on it, it would have been that summer. I yeah. think now mm -hmm. that Spurs have the time, they will. Like, I, look, I think I think we want to go for Skriniar because he he became available, which it Spurs didn't want to pay the money that Inter wanted to pay for him. But for me, now that we've had kind of six months, and um, we'll have another six months um, or another few months after January transfer window, it's kind of. Give ourselves a real opportunity to scout the best option for us. But one thing is clear, lads, that we're in the market for an absolute beast. We've been we in the spring one. yard. We You've really been need the best, best of guard. The height of him. You've been linked with um, Milinkovic. Um, you've been linked with Kim Ming Jae. Do you know what I mean? So one thing we're definitely in the market for is a centre-back. for an absolute beast of a centre-back. Absolutely. And uh, to, just to, uh, there is a story about Milinkovic. Uh, according to Fabrizio Romano, uh, via uh, We Are Tottenham TV, he said Tottenham are interested in Nikola Milenkovic and Sven Botman ahead of the summer transfer window. So Sky Sports saying we're looking back at Milan Skriniar. Uh, for Romano saying we're looking at Milenkovic and Botman. It, it does look as though uh, centre-back is taking priority for the summer. And again, uh, Lyle Thomas said centre-back is a top priority, but right now there's no desperate need to sign one. So in January, if a deal comes up, perhaps he will go for it, but it's not going to be a priority for us in this window. But 
uh, Botman we spoke about a bit earlier in the window now when I had Romano on the channel a couple of weeks ago he said there wasn't anything there with Botman but that seems to have changed in recent weeks so Tottenham are actively looking into centre backs that we could be signing in the in the coming uh, coming months uh, we'll stick with Milinkovic for now though Marcelo you absolutely love him tell him tell him tell us what we need to know about Milinkovic and why he's a player that needs to be on our team Listen, Milinkovic is a baller, man. You know what I mean? He's just he's also a flexible defender. You know what I mean? I, I, let me tell you this. I've seen Skriniar play. I've seen Milinkovic play. I've seen, you know, Kevin J play. Uh, I, I, you know, I have the Chinese league here once we were interested in him. Let me tell you this. He, he, he's not the one. Yeah, uh, Kevin J is not the one. Uh, Skriniar, he's a, he's a limited defender. He's a very good defender, but he can't play three at the black, back. Uh, he can't, he can't, he can't do it. He can't. He can't do. He has to play only four at the back, or else he, he gets found out. You know what I mean? Every time we play three at the back, he he's gotten found out. So he's a limited defender. Milankovic is the real deal, bro. I'm telling you, bro. You know what I mean? I don't miss. I don't miss. I told you about Rodon. Everybody now is on the Rodon train. I said it before. The Welsh Maldini. I was on that Welsh Maldini train. I was on the Celsian train. Everybody always doubted me. I have an eye for the youngsters, man. I'm telling you, I have an eye for these youngsters. And I How don't do you disagree with the comments from the sports like saying that we're not in a rush to sign the centre back? But I'm telling you, uh, but uh, as far as that, I'm t no, David, I'm telling you, Milinkovic is the real deal. 23 years old. He has an 80% clearance rate. You know, Kim and Jay, or how, how do you say his name? I might, I might be butchering his name. He has a 43% win rate in aerial duels. That's not what we want. You know what I mean? His air game yeah. is not there, bro. You know, you ain't got no jump. You know, you just be paying for another Eric Dyer. He's the Korean Eric Dyer. You know what I mean? Don't, 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 don't go for him. Oh, we don't need enough of you know, him. Really like, I'm just saying, bro. Milinkovic, he can, he can pass. He's got skills, but he's got the aerial ability. He's bro. versatile as well, Milinkovic. Yeah. He can actually play it right back as well. Yeah, exactly. I think I might be mistaken here, but I believe he could even do a job in CDM as well. Potentially, bro, he can do whatever Milinkovic. he wants, bro. Milinkovic can go anywhere he wants, bro. I'm telling you, he's a skillful player. You could tell. For tell me, I don't care. Right back. For me, I actually don't care what other positions you, you can play. What I want is a, a master at centre back. That's where we need to focus. Yeah. To be honest with you, oh, yeah. in a way, I kind of agree with your man. Um, I think it's Lyle Thomas. You said Matt is it from Sky Sports? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In a great, in a way, I kind of agree with Lyle Thomas that we have afforded ourselves some time to to, to get a centre back. But for me, if you want to get in Milinkovic, you don't have the time to wait because there's going to be other bigger clubs on him in the summer. We don't have the time to wait. For me, if you want to go and get me, you get him now. Uh, and to be honest with you... Just trigger the release even, clause. You have to just trigger the release clause. Yeah, I don't even think Marcelo agrees with that comment saying that we're not in a rush to buy a centre-back because I know he hates yeah. Dyer. And outside of Roden... Yeah, I think we need a centre-back. And that's that's right. you have Dyer and Sanchez to pick from. Listen, I, I would sell Sanchez. I, I, listen, so, yeah. you, can't, you, can't, you can't tell me... Uh, there's a thousand clubs out there, right? There's a thousand <laughs> clubs out there. One of those clubs have to be looking for a center back, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just sell them for whatever price you want. You know what I mean? Five million, ten million, just sell them. <laughs> Give it to them. Whether it's a Chinese league, you know, Arabic league, whatever, man, just sell them. And then <laughs> just get just trigger the twenty two million. We have you can't tell me we don't have twenty two. Trigger that clause and let's get them. And then boom, let's go. Done. We got yeah. a <laughs> simple as done deal. We're yeah, approved. Uh, looking at Malik that's, what release, that's what release clauses are about. You just trigger them. Yeah. Like you look what I hate to bring it up, but what Arsenal done with Partey in the summer, it's a release clause. You just pay the money and you get the player. It's literally that simple with release clauses. All the blooms fairly deflated at that party fairly quickly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent for, for Milinkovic this season. Uh, he's played 17 games in the Serie A. He averages 1.5 tackles per game, 1.5 interceptions per game, 3.4 clearances per game, and one block per game. His numbers are good. Uh, he's, you know, as Marcelo said, he's good in the air. He's good on the ground. He's good with the ball. He's good out of the ball. He's a quality player. And again, I keep coming back to it. The the reason that I think he's so good and that he could be a, a fantastic option for us is last summer when it looked as though Spurs could potentially sign Milan Skriniar uh, into Milan, their number one option to replace him was Nikola Milenkovic. Yeah. And that says a lot to me. You know, they're the, they're the team that are coming up against Milenkovic twice a season. They're coming up against every Serie A centre-back and they said Milenkovic is the best out there uh, aside from Milan Skriniar. So I think... Uh, no, no, I, he's better. I'm telling yeah, you, exactly. he's, better, he's better than Skriniar because guess what? Yeah. Skriniar was bench mm. for a long time against Conte. I'm, I'm saying with Jess, he's better than Skriniar because Skriniar was bench against Conte because Conte wanted to play black, uh, back three and, and, and Skriniar couldn't, right? As well, he's Milenkovic, been playing this season, yeah. Skriniar, in a back three. And, and, and the thing is, right, Milankovic, right, he's playing in a worse team, and he's putting up those stats. He's playing and you know, cheaper. 
yeah, Florentina yeah. is not even close to an Inter Milan status. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, he, I'm telling you, bro, Milinkovic is the guy, man. He's the guy. <laughs> Simple he very well could be. Yeah, I um, hope so. Uh, before we get into talking about Sven Batman, I just do want to say uh, to anyone who's watching, if you are new to the channel and you want more Tottenham Hotspur transfer talk like this, uh, live watch-alongs, podcasts, uh, anything you could want from a Spurs channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified every time you upload. And if you do want exclusive access to exclusive content and member call-in shows, Make sure to hit that join button down below and everything will be explained for you there. Uh, now, Alan Clark, channel member, is saying, Batman is a fantastic young prospect, 21 years of age, positionally aware and rarely gives possession away. Uh, he's someone that Liverpool were apparently looking at as well. However, Klopp just seems to be too stubborn. Uh, he does not want to sign a centre-back. But if they were going for one, uh, Sven Batman was right on the top of their list. Uh, uh, Charlie, we'll start with you on this one. Do you think Batman is, is a good option for us? Well, actually, with Botman personally, I'd never actually heard of him until these rumours came about. I've heard, I've looked into him a bit now since sort of the rumours sort of started gathering pace a bit. He plays for Lille in the French league, I believe it is. Um, and as you said there, the Liverpool interest there, and um, from from what I was reading as well, very good on the ball. Apparently, he's um, big, he's strong, good in the air as well. I think. Look, depending on what the price is there, I think. He could be a decent addition. However, I can't comment too much on Botman because I, I don't know much about him. He's one of the few players that I haven't sort of looked into um, out of our targets. Um, so, but yeah, look, from what I've seen at the moment, from the small stuff that I have seen, he looks he looks a promising young player uh, um, and Botman. Yeah. And I think he could be potentially a good addition for us if he was to come in. Mm. Yeah, for me, look, he's actually a left-sided centre-back. Uh, you asked me about him before, Matty. I didn't know too much about him. But I went and done my research just for you. So he's a left-sided centre-back. I think he's left-footed as well, which is kind of every club at Europe would be looking for because they're a rarity nowadays. They are. The left-footed centre-back that play on the left side. And um, look, for me, you hear you hear a lot of Liverpool fans bigging them up. They tend to do that with their signings. Look, we have to remember, he was an unknown quantity club from Ajax. Everyone was surprised he got moved to Lille. He got the move to Lille and it's worked out. But I... I for me, you sign them. You sign them when our first team is sorted out, and we can't improve on the first team. That's when you go and sign the players like Sven Botman and stuff like that. For me, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. He has all the potential in the world, but I don't want to be signing potential. I want Milinkovic. Um, yeah. The Danish kid here coming into super chat, uh, twenty five krona saying Botman time. Uh, thanks very much for that. Uh, the Danish kid. He also says uh, Botman has played more minutes than Milinkovic, and he has the same stats. And uh, from all players Fourth with full league. minutes, uh, Botman has the best defensive duel Ooh. success rate. In Europe's top five league, so he does have a lot of potential. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but the French league is terrible. You know what I mean? Like, who's he going to be playing against? You know what I mean? Like, he has it, played in the it, Europa League. And um, also, Lil. And, and also, the thing is, Lil is also a good team. You know what I mean? Uh, the thing you got to put into perspective: Milinkovic is playing, and pretty much uh, he's their best player, bro. You know what I mean? Like, he is playing in a team that that. It's not that good. I mean, where, where are I, I? Don't I forgot the last time we're playing. You know what I'm saying? They lost, they lost five nil or something. I think it was yesterday. Yeah, but like, where are they but in the league? I, I need probably I need somewhere to... down near the bottom. I'd say if you're in yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's playing really in a championship side. You know what I mean? Like or like uh, he's playing in a, a near relegation side. While you know Botman is playing Lil, which is a top side, and he's carrying this championship side. I'm telling you, you get rid of Milinkovic, that team goes under. That team goes under. And the thing is, right, with Botman is I, I haven't seen much of him, so I can't say about him. He does, you know, the fact that Jurgen Klopp is interested does speak volumes because Jurgen Klopp does have an eye for for youngsters. Um, but listen, I'll say this: I'm gonna start paying attention to the French league. Personally, I hate watching the French league. I think it's the most boring league in the world. But I'm gonna start paying attention. <laughs> I'm gonna start paying attention to that French league. I'm gonna start watching Lil, and I'm telling you. If if I see something in them, get them. But mm. if you don't, don't get them because I never miss, baby. I'm always yeah. Right. Yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll have a look watch him um, well. Edward uh, Camavinga lad. He's absolutely quality. Oh, that guy, so that guy is a baller. He's played for France already. He's played for France. I think he's got a couple of caps under his he's belt. He's a midfielder. He, no? he actually, yeah, he is. Yeah. But he actually scored on his professional debut. He's fast, for lad. Yeah, he's brilliant. You can get on better, so this guy's going to be better. You think? I think they're slightly no, different he, types of players. I think it's a shame. Um, I think he's going to be better than the baller, bro. That's a lot yeah. of they're different. I think they're different types of players. Camavinga's more of an out-and-out defensive midfielder and Dombele's more a box-to-box -box player. So I think they're slightly I mean, different Camavinga, types of players. Camavinga's a box-to-box -box midfielder too. 
Yeah, he can probably do a job there, but I think Kamavinga, his main role was in this out and at the Hoybier role. I think that's his main role, Kamavinga, the Hoiberg role. Well, look, he's, we haven't linked him in the past, but uh, there's nothing at the moment. So we'll, we'll just keep on track with the, the players that we could be looking at. And uh, one we've spoken about uh, before is, is Eder Militao. Uh, according to Build, uh, Real Madrid want to loan him out and Tottenham are interested. Absolutely. Again, I think Liverpool are, were mentioned, but look, uh, it could just be because they need a centre-back and he is a centre-back. You know, there, there mightn't be any more to those stories. But um, he, he's one that... He, he's a weird... Uh, He's a weird. It's a weird situation with him because he's he's a very talented footballer. He's young. He has quality, but he just seems to be in and out of that Real Madrid side. You know, he. I think he's another player that Zidane just just doesn't seem to get on with, which is is strange mm. because they're they're quality players in that Real Madrid side that Zidane just seems has kind of have personal problems with, and for that reason they're forcing him out. You know, Sergio Reglan is one of them. Uh, Gareth Bale being another. So this could potentially be uh, a third one that that Spurs uh, uh, benefit from. But again, we spoke about him before, uh, so I don't want to dive too much into that. Uh, Kim and Jay, Alistair Gold has come out and said uh, Kim and Jay is a player that Tottenham have looked at in the past year, but they're not expected to move for him God. in the coming fortnight. Uh, I, I think last summer he was just an option there that if we didn't yeah. uh, sign any centre-back that we wanted, he would kind of be a, a backup option. Of course, we did get Joe Roden. We didn't get Skriniar, who maybe was our number one choice, but David, there has to be an element of relief that we're, we're not kind of stuck in that uh, kind of mindset that he can be a, a good backup option for us. Yeah, hundred percent. Because when there was a tweet put out by one of the Tottenham Twitter pages there, and people had a meltdown about saying, "Here we go, big centre back coming," I was the first one to say, "I think it could have been King Min Jae." So I'm absolutely relieved he's not coming. Look, he's just the Korean Harry Maguire. The only thing is, is that he can't get off the off the ground. He's only won forty percent of his air drills, forty six percent. So that's that's not good enough for cent. If that's in the Chinese league. Imagine how yeah. much he's, he's going to be betting the air. He's going to get. He's going to. Uh, I I've seen him get spun in the Chinese league against some some really oh, small God. players, man. I'm telling you, bro. If he plays in the Premier League, well, the, gonna... the likes of Arnautovic and Oscar, yeah, uh, bro. He's going to get. Bro, if he's getting spun by Oscar, I'm telling you, man. That man is going to be. He's going to be dizzy, bro. He's not even remember the Premier League. He's not even going to. Yeah, he's not even going to remember the Premier League, bro. He's not even remember the Premier League, Charlie. He's going to be dizzy the whole time, bro. He's going to get spun four four seven. Nah. Look, gonna... For me, if, if if we get him, it's just a typical star signing. There's there's no reason yeah. behind it. We just get him because he has potential and he's cheap. I don't want him. Well, the thing We're is with Kim and Jay, he's not very he's, best he's, he's, he's 24. He's not even young. You know what I mean? He's not even like sort of more potential. He's like he's 24, I believe. So he's not he's not young young anymore. Yeah. So he's not. I wouldn't. He's not really one that I fancy. To be honest, again, no, they, they, call, they call him the Korean monster, but I'm going to call him the Korean monster because he's so slow. <laughs> he must be picking out over there. I think if he, he was to come in, him. I think if he was to come in, the benefit, one of the benefits would be is that he recover, he repay all the um, all the shirt sales would sort of repay his fee, similar to what happened with Son. Yeah, well, That'd be a massive for the Korean though. market. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm tired of that. I, yeah, I'm tired of the shirts. We got care of Bale for that, right? Like, didn't yeah. we already do that? You know what I mean? Yeah, we have some now. Yeah, so he only quadrupled his transfer fee. Yeah, I mean, so now the most valuable player. Eighteen one jersey is the closest I want to get to Kim Ooh. and Jay. I don't want him to be any closer. Um, simple wow. as that. Uh, but look, uh, that's those are defenders that uh, are being spoken about for Spurs. We have Milan Skriniar, Nikola Milinkovic, Sven Botman, Eder Militao, and Kim and Jay. Uh, so everyone who's watching, uh, if you're watching live, or if you're watching in the in the stream replay, put down in the comments or the live chat whichever uh, the defender that you'd like to see Spurs sign this window. Um, we go around uh, one by one for all of us. I think we know what the answer is going to be. But just uh, drop the name, lads. Marcelo, what centre back do you want? Come on, it's not even a question, bro. Milinkovic, baby. Come on, Milinkovic. David. My runners are tied. I'm two feet in the ball. It's Milinkovic or Max Aarons. <laughs> or Max, Max Aarons. Yeah. Right, Charlie. Back. Which centre back do you want? Centre backs. For me, I'm sort of stuck in two minds. I think I'd be very happy if we were to get either Skriniar or Milinkovic. They're my two that are definitely my first choices. Yeah, I think I'm going to ask Nikola, Nikola Milenkovic as well. Um, we get those uh, suggestions coming through uh, in the live chat when they come in in a second. Um, so, it's the, of course, a bit of a delay in the stream. Uh, I want to talk now about uh, Nicolo Barella, uh, central mm. midfielder for Inter Milan. Uh, I think he scored last week against Juventus when, when they beat them 2-0. Uh, Fabrizio Romano and We Are Tottenham TV uh, said, many clubs are scouting Inter Milan's Nicolo Barella. Tottenham are one of them. We've been a fan of him for a while. Uh, there's, you know, uh, Romano's uh, famous saying there's nothing advanced at the moment, uh, but there is interest there from Spurs. We're taking a look. Uh, Charlie, we'll start with you on this one. What, what do you make of Nicola Barella? So Barella is a player that I saw sort of in the Europa League final last year and sort of in sort of into Milan's run to the final to Europa League. And I have to say, I was quite impressed with him. I think he's the type of player that 
sort of for me, he he reminds me a bit of Gun Gundogan at Man City, sort of a midfielder that can sort of keep the play ticking and get goals and assists as well. And I think that's the type of player that we we've been crying out for Winks to be, but he just hasn't been. And I think Barella sort of falls into that bracket for me. Good pass on him, good shot, gets goals from midfield, and um, a very very young player, very talented player. However, as I understand it from Fabrizio Romano. Um, as I heard on We Are Tottenham TV, they're looking for around eighty million quid. So I don't think Barella. He's look. He's a guy. He's a guy that I really like the look of. Um, as as James here says, yep, yeah, that's literally what I just said. The type of player that we've all called for Winks to be. Um, he is. So yeah, Barella be a fantastic buy if we were to get him over the line. But unfortunately, with all the financial trouble and just just the fact that Inter have only just got him, they actually paid thirty five million quid for him from Calgary um, last summer. So he's only been there about a year. So for me. I'd absolutely love this one to happen. However, unfortunately, I just can't see it. But you never know in the future. You never know. That's only hope. We can only hope. Exactly. I think that's the the Spurs fan mindset there. We can only hope. Um, I, I'd be the same. You know, he's a talented footballer, uh, a good player. You know, a lot of players can look better in the Serie A or the League 1, even the La Liga. And when they come to Premier League, it's, it's very different, especially for centre midfielders. But he is a talented player. He does have a lot of potential. And he he's a player I would like to see a sign, but for 80 million, it's not going to happen. And I wouldn't want it to happen because there are better options out there uh, for cheaper. Uh, David, Nick Barella, uh, would, would you think, do you think it's realistic and would you like to see it happen? Um, first of all, I've never heard of him. So if I've never heard of him, he's never going to be good enough for Tottenham. That's one thing for sure. Um, no, no, I don't want him. Don't want him. No, honestly, if we're going to get a midfielder, he's better than Wings. He's better than Wings. I don't want to be wasting any more money on all these side men. I want the real deal at Tottenham. This is yeah. why I'm here. This is what I'm calling for. I, I've never heard of Barella. I know he plays for like one of the Milan teams. Do you know, I'm not sure whether it's the blue side or the red side. Couldn't care less. He's not good enough for Tottenham. We don't need any of these sort of players. We need the very best. There's better players in the Premier League that can do the job than him. I don't want them. No. It's going to take him six months to come in and get up to the speed. And to be honest with you, there's a reason why Spurs, play, Spurs don't sign many Italians because they never work out at Tottenham. It's as simple yeah. as that. Kudicini, yeah. the goalkeeper, he was the only one that I can think of, really. The goalkeeper. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, mean listen, the closest Italian he got is the Welsh Maldini. <laughs> <laughs> Look, listen, uh, Barella. Yeah, no. Nah, listen, it's interested FC. Let's be real here. You know what I mean? We're just interested. <laughs> oh, we're we're interested really. FC for like yeah, every player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, no way. 80 million, not, not a chance. Forget about it. No. Um, I really also, want Sabitzer. He's the one that I really want Sabitzer. I agree with David on that in that one. Yeah, no, listen, I, I've been saying this since the beginning. If, if his name is not Sabitzer, just don't don't even mention me, another central midfielder. I want Sabitzer. <laughs> He's the one. He's a chosen one. We should be going all over him if we have any ambition. Please. So, we need yeah. Sabitzer. We have to get him. Um, I swear to God, if we miss out on him like we did with Bruno, or honestly, just give up. Seriously, we cannot miss out on this one, Sabitzer. There's no way. Yeah, we've had Fabrizio Romano in the last couple of days on the, the K Galazzo podcast, and he said, in January, Leipzig don't want to see any top player leave. Sabitzer has quality but he's also a fighter he's perfect for Mourinho uh we will have to wait until the summer so it seems for any big deals any deals at all that Spurs could potentially be uh completing in uh anytime soon yeah. it looks like we will have to wait for the summer which is fair enough January window is a very difficult window made even more difficult by the the current situation but uh with Sabitzer he left 12 months left in his contract at the time yeah. David th this looks like it could happen and this is one that we we really need to happen isn't it uh, yeah this is one we want to happen like we're talking about Berea instead of putting the money on Berea go and put it on Sabitzer the one that all the fans want everyone here wants him he he's a typical Mourinho player he has the right mentality he has the right attitude and he can also play a box to box as well the guy's absolutely top class I want him in the thing is with Nico Berea, you look at um, midfielders that have come to the Premier League before. Um, Aquilani, I'm sure some of them Liverpool fans said that he was going to be um, a Ballon d'Or winner. I've seen Shane's <laughs> comment from there. Wouldn't but, be surprised. Um, you know what I mean? look, look how that one worked out. Italian midfielders generally don't come to the Premier League and do well whatsoever. I'm all in on Sabitzer. He's, he's my guy. He not only can he assist and score goals, but he likes to get stuck in. He's an all-round midfielder and he's absolutely perfect for what Tottenham needs to complement Heiberg and end on baller. Uh, look, listen, I, and uh, I really felt like we listen. Uh, stop saying difficult, Matty. That's Stephen Hitchin or whatever his name is telling you, man. You know what I mean? I <laughs> hate. I, 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 yeah, I know, but me. like, I, I'm sorry, but like, I keep hating. He got that the word. word from Steve I Hitchin hate. Yeah, I hate the word. Oh, it, this is too difficult. We should have got him in on January. Now we're waiting in the summer, and and, and look, uh, we're gonna wait until the summer, and then 
the other clubs are going to be interested in him. I'm surprised other but, clubs didn't make a bid for him already. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, but what, what I mean, what I mean when I say it's difficult is January is a seller's market. It's as simple as that, especially with the way things are now. In January, teams do not want to let their big players go. It's in it's a similar situation. If a team was looking for a, a big uh, one of Spurs' main players, you say, "But we're in the middle of a season. We're not going to be able to get a replacement uh, quickly." It's 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 the fact. They got, but but they got look at the numbers. Guy. You can, they got Sabah yeah, They did, but that's from their sister club. That's from, you know, they have the same owners. No, so I mean, that's from yeah, and yeah, Nostra, but, and they, they can't afford to hold on to play like that when he does want to go. It's, it's, it's not, it's not an opinion. It's not, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's fact. If you look at the numbers, if you look at the history, the January transfer window is more difficult to get deals done than the summer transfer window. And it's, it's as simple as that. You know, I, I wish it wasn't. I no, wish one, no, no wonder before. Steve, no wonder Steve Hitchin hates it. <laughs> well, well, he's he's saying, he's saying, he's saying, he invest that money, well, go and get a bitcher. Yeah, but as the thing well, is, we haven't let anybody go. We haven't let any of the dead weight go. We're, we're, you know what I mean? That's that's my point as well. Yeah, that's like my problem he doesn't with do his job in general. You know that's what I mean? my problem as well. Like if if we're getting told that this window is about selling players, fine, I'm I'm happy with that, right? But why are we not trying to sell players like the likes of Lamella, Mora, Sanchez, these guys that just aren't good enough and need to go? Mm. I think. We should be doing more to sell these guys. Yes, it's difficult. As Matt said, it's a seller's market. I completely understand that. But I just feel like we should be doing a bit more than we are from what from what from all the noises and information we're hearing. Like, for example, there's stuff come out saying that oh, we won't accept we won't we won't accept making a loss on Sanchez. But at the end of the day, we might we might not have a choice if we're gonna sell him because he's just not good enough and his value would have dropped. It's it's just the way yeah. it is. And I think we're not doing enough personally to sell players. That's just my opinion anyway. And on and, and on Sabitzer as well. I'll just say this as well. Sabitzer, Tottenham need Marcel Sabitzer. It's as simple as that. We need this guy, honestly. I watched him play against us both legs in the Champions League. He he is he is he's just exactly what we need. Fits the Mourinho profile perfectly. Bot can play box to box, a versatile, can play on the right wing as well, can even do a job in CDM. Yeah, we need this guy in Tottenham. You have to go and get him in the summer. Win the summer, make the move early. Go and go there. First days of the summer window. Get in there quickly. So we don't we don't get ourselves in a bidding war. Go there quickly. Get this deal done. We have to get this guy. I'm not. I cannot deal with us missing out on him like I had to deal with Bruno Grealish. All these guys. We have to get this one done. And if we miss out, I genuinely We're give gonna up. miss out. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. This is Tottenham. This this says this says Tottenham. Anik board run all over it, yeah. and now we're looking oh, at no. other. No, I'm telling you, bro. I, I, I listen. I, I hope not too, but I, I know this club. You know what I mean? I just, I just know how this club is run. We're not. We're gonna miss out on Sabat Sauce. We're gonna miss him out. We're gonna get Christian Eriksen back, and then we're gonna go try to go for that. Uh, the Jefferson kid from Santos, who's good. Don't get me wrong. Yes, he, he has a high potential. That report but, was from four years ago. <laughs> that one. No, no, the Did Jefferson one. If, yeah, we get Ericsson back, if we get Ericsson back, Spurs fans will be calling for us to go and get DeAndre Edlin back. Honestly, it's, it's stupid. <laughs> you can't replace Ericsson no. with Ericsson. It's yeah. absolutely stupid. Like, no, where that's, are that's what we're going to do. But that's just, what we're going to do, David. That's what we're going to yeah. do. Yeah, I know. And, and, oh, we I'm can't, sick we can't of it. That. I'm just, sure just on the market. Sorry, just on the market because you brought it up, mate. I never once heard Harry Redknapp make an excuse about um, not signing the player in January. Yeah, but did he ever sign players like... The, the quality so there, like, Nelson. <laughs> so Nelson. Never, he was never okay. going to play a 50, 60 million pound player. I, I will say this. I will say this, Matty. I will say this. If the, if if we if we are truly Tottenham fans, right? We see Dali Alley are are is in the open is open for the market for for PSG. There's rumors that well, we got some news on Ericsson, actually. We got some news. That it's from the Telegraph here saying Christian Eriksen returning to Tottenham remains a possibility, but Leicester are now keen on signing the midfielder. Please, uh, please Leicester. So, uh, yeah. must be trying to sell the paper. So please. there is there is interest there from Leicester by the looks of it for um for Eriksen, um, which is strange because Leicester they've got some creative players already. The likes of James Madison, I think um, Tielemans is another one. So it's a strange one that for me with look, Leicester. Look, I'll say we're... this. Oh, okay. oh, go ahead, go ahead, Matty. I'm not going myself. Go ahead. No, no. I, I was just gonna say this, right? If we sell Dali Alley, because I I don't think we are, and I hope we, we don't, because if we sell him, I think Ericsson is gonna come back. But if we do sell uh, Dali Alley, right, we're gonna be selling him for big money. Levy is never gonna let him go for for little money. We're gonna be no. selling him for like fifty million around there. If we sell him, I want Sabatar. Nothing else. Sabatar. Yeah. That's yeah. it. If I see anything else, I'm I'm done with this board. I'm Anik out. If you're not Anik out <laughs> after that, you have no ambition. That's zero. Like I'm, yeah. I'm 
Done. No. Bro. To be I fair, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm optimistic for the Sabitzer deal. I am because it's been documented that he um, he wants to come. He's keen on joining Tottenham, linking up with Mourinho. His, he's going for a cut price in the summer, so um, a lot cheaper than what his actual value is. So to be fair, I am optimistic that this one could actually get yeah. done um, if we if we move quickly. If we move quickly, then but I we am never optimistic. do. <laughs> well, we did for Hoiberg. We did for Hoiberg. So hopefully the similar thing happens Look, with Sabitzer. Mm. Before, before we move on to the next point, at the end of the day, lads, we have to remember, with Jose Mourinho here, we can't be sitting here making excuses why we can't get players anymore. We have to just go and do now. We have yeah. the best man in the world. You don't back him. He's going to fuck off in the summer. I'm going to be back to square one again. We have to start backing the guy and stop making excuses and put the pressure Absolutely. on to get the players in that Absolutely. he also Absolutely, yeah. Steve, Look, can uh, you ball fraud start doing your job? <laughs> uh, let's go on to, to Christian Eriksen. Um, as Charlie said there, second of the Telegraph reporting uh, that uh, Leicester could potentially be in for for Christian Eriksen, and it's 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 more precise than we've heard from any story before. But we know uh, Eriksen has been offered to Premier League teams, and the situation is as for Richie Romano here said on the Here We Go podcast: If Tottenham wants to sign Eriksen, they will have to pay a loan fee as well as his salary. That means they will have to only, pay four million euro time. for the remaining season, uh, the remainder of the season. If we want him, we have to pay a loan fee. Any other Premier League team do not have to pay a loan I fee. Can't, I can't believe that. A case of his own medicine. Uh, Inter Milan, they've said this in the past, you know, uh, when we were looking for Milan Skriniar, they weren't willing to negotiate. They said 50 million euro with uh, an extra 10 million in add-ons. If we want him, anything less, it's not happening. Simply because last summer, uh, or last January, when we were selling Christian Eriksen, we said we want 20 million. Inter said, we'll give you 15. Daniel Levy said, no, we want 20. They said, okay, we'll give you 17. Daniel Levy said, no, we want 20. And we came out of that deal with 20 million pounds. And Inter Milan are trying to do the exact same thing back to us, which you can understand. But maybe if Ericsson does want this move back to Spurs, as much as people are saying, that could force uh, any sort of a move through. Um, Charlie, we'll start with you. Uh, on Christian Ericsson in particular, would you like to see him back at Spurs? It depends. I think, as I said on your stream, I think if it if it involves paying this loan fee and his wages, then no. I think it's too much of a risk. I think him coming in on loan, yeah, maybe loan would be less of a risk than a permanent deal. However, with the, sort of the finances, his huge wages that he's on, for me, it's a no. I think a player that hasn't been sort of at his best for a couple of years now, I'd say he hasn't been at his best for a while, and I think he it's not he's not just going to get back to his best overnight. Yes, I can understand the logic in a way of him bringing him in. He does add another weapon to us. If you can sort of get something out of him, I think you do have a bit of quality there. Um, but look. Not for me if it involves this loan fee and everything. If it was sort of a standard loan sort of paying, maybe some of his wages and I'll be, yeah, maybe on loan till the end of the season until we can go for Sabitzer. But for me, with all of this, with all of the cost involved and sort of, I think it's too much of a risk. So for me, for me, it's a no. And as I said, I just can't see him recapturing his form overnight. So yeah, it's a no for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, Calcio Mercato were saying Jose Mourinho has opened the door to Christian Eriksen's return, but Daniel Levy wants Inter to pay some of the midfielders' wages, which are, which are quote, inadmissible terms for the Italian side. David, could this be the kind of thing that saves us from a potential return for Ericsson that we just can't yeah, afford? Yeah, I hope it is. I'll send the, the, I'll send the Inter Milan um, chairman some flowers because at the end of the day, lads, why would we do Christian Eriksson a favour by taking away from his hell from Inter Milan? Well, he, fucking, he, he turned his back on the club, lads. People seem to forget this. I don't care what he done beforehand. It's his last it's his last bit, that the actions that tell me. He turned his back on this club. I don't want him anywhere near it. We're the only fan base in the world that call for Christian Eriksen to replace Christian Eriksen. It's not good enough. We're looking for a creative attacking midfielder. We want to replace him with the lad that turned his back on the club and done fuck all in the jersey for the last year and a half as well. His attitude was pissed poor. He clearly wanted out. Anytime he got brought on, he didn't care whether he'd done something or not. Why do you want him back? He then he moves to Inter. He's had no form whatsoever. He's been found out. He's found out that he's not the top class player that he thought he was. And now Spurs fans and Spurs and, and all these reports and everything else, by which, which I will add, none of these reporters are the board. So I don't care what the reports say. At the end of the day, I want to hear it from the board. And I don't want him back at my club. I do not want him back at my club. And if the board had any ambition, Jose had any ambition, and everyone else at the club had any ambition, no one would want this fraud back at my club. Simple as. That's where I stand in Ericsson. You don't yeah. love talking. You don't want to be here. I don't want you ever back yeah. again. We're the only club in the world that brings players back to replace the player that we sold to try and improve our starting eleven. At the end no. of the day, you don't fuck all with us. I don't want him here. I, I fuck. I, I, sorry. Uh, just move on. David, I, I agree. <laughs> Spot on. I agree with you. That's that's sort of my thinking as well with Ericsson. Yeah. Why yeah. he found out the grass isn't always greener for me. And yeah, I, I agree with you, David. I think you're 100 percent there. Uh, I'll go on, Marcelo. 
Nah, listen. Just change our motto if we bring Harrison back. Just change the motto. It's it's to, it's to dare us to stay the same. That's to replace, to replace. <laughs> yeah, to dare us to stay the same. That's it. Not to do. Okay, I, I, I want to touch on a little story here. Um, Alistair Gold kind of uh, getting rid of a lot of our worries. Yes. He says Tottenham are not currently trying to make yeah. a move for Thank Manchester God. United. Oh, Thank Thank God. It's such a massive relief that uh, nothing will be Thank happening God. here. You know, the news kind of came out in the summer that maybe Jesse Lingard uh, could oh, be a target no. for Spurs if we did lose um, if we did lose Deli Ali to PSG. But of course, he stayed, uh, and it looks like again we've been saved. Uh, Marcelo, I'm sure you have some uh, interesting words to say. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Lingard is <laughs> shit, dude. If we've ever gotten him, I, I swear to God, I, I I would have to question why I support this club. I would really <laughs> have to, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, if we uh, if we let Deli Ali go and then we replace him with Jesse fucking Langard, I, I would be fuming, man. The fact that there was even rumors, it's a bit embarrassing, man. This guy should be nowhere near Tottenham yeah. Hotspurs. Nowhere near. Let him he stay should, at United. He should go to Tottenham. Arsenal. He should go to Arsenal. Yeah, please. Because their stadium's his dance floor, so he should go there. He's exactly. doing dances after he scored. <laughs> just, just get, get it. Yeah, no. Stay away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie Gold. <laughs> the Danish Shake coming in with another super chat. Twenty five. Lingardino. Lingardino. <laughs> Look, I oh thanks for the super chat again. Massively appreciated. But let's 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 not let's not sign Jesse Lingard. Um, no, he won't be good on the pitch. He won't be good in the dressing room. He's a he's a bad <laughs> apple. Um, I think any United fan uh, would tell you that. Um, the, the final incoming that we're going to talk about today is it's an interesting one. Um, Fabrizio Romano via We Are Tottenham TV saying Danny Ings has always mm. been a player appreciated by the Tottenham board. They've always been looking at him as a possibility. Uh, <laughs> that is a comment. Yeah, <laughs> we have the latest comment. Well, that's from Chain, is it? No, that's a comment? comment. No, that's, it's, it's from VVHM. It's the latest one that's just come through. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that just made me laugh. That just made oh me laugh. Oh my god! I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but look, I'm, sort I'm, of along I'm, the right lines of what we do do at this club, though, as a family. Yeah. He's sort of along the right line. Yeah. Yeah. No, he yeah. isn't wrong. We would he's, be he's not. like that. Uh, but I'm Danny Ings. Uh, Marcelo, we start with you. I know you tweeted about it uh, not long before we came live. <laughs> what, what do you think about this one? No, listen, I, I, although I was kind of, you know, mad at Shane for taking the piss by saying that Danny Ings is better than Sonaldo and Kane, which is taking the piss. I don't care. You know what I mean? I still think Ings is a good footballer. You know what I mean? He could definitely be a good he's – he's an excellent backup for Harry Kane. And, you know what I mean, even we can still play Kane, you know, maybe as a number 10 and play Ings as a forward, I'll be also down for that. Listen, Ings, Ings is a very good – you know, he's also English, so he fills the, you know, the quota – um, uh, he's he'll be a fantastic signing in the summer, and it, it just goes to show how important you know champion. I was I was trying more to clarify why Champions League football is important rather like why Denny Ings is like if we don't get Denny Ings, it's not the end of the world for me. I was just trying to highlight why Champions League football is so important this season because if you want the players like Sabitzas, we want the players like Denny Ings, we want the players like Milinkovic, we gotta get Champions League football. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, it's a must. It's the most important. It, thing it's a must. Do. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that just highlights <laughs> it. The fact that he goes out and says, "I want a Champions League club," just goes to show that you know what I mean. Like some fans were saying, "Oh, you know, I'll be fine with a Carabao Cup and an FA Cup and then the eighth. No, that's no. Not why not happen. both? Why not both? Champions yeah. League and a cup. Both. Yeah, that's how I see it. Both. E- exactly. We need both. That's we need both. We need both. Yeah, we need both. So, but no, but like I was just saying, like you know, telling like people who who think that just winning a cup and you know not getting no, fourth is it's, good it's, enough. It's, no it's one's not. gonna remember you for the for life. You're not in the Champions League, right? Is what attracts players, right? And it's not. And like say, like for example, Wigan won the FA Cup in like 2012, right? No one's gonna go to Wigan just for that. You know what I yeah. mean? No one cares particularly. You need both. For me, yes, we need a trophy, a hundred percent. I agree, but you need both. And I think as for Danny Ings, yeah. A player that I I like, of course, a really good goal scorer for Southampton last year. Always likes to score against us as well. Um, but yeah, look, it does yeah, say there are, yeah, he is a good player. He said English fits the quota as well. Um, and and but as as we know, um, would he would he want to come? Would would he want to come because of? Well, I have a solution for that, Charlie. Would he get much minutes because of Harry Kane? Would I he, have would a solution. He, would he get Charlie. minutes? Mm. I have a solution for you. So think about this. Harry Kane drops deeper. Put Danny yeah. Ings up front and Harry Kane feeding them. That would be absolute fire. Look, but everyone knows Danny Ings was unlucky at Liverpool. Everyone knows it. Fairness, he was. He is a good finisher. He's a great striker. He's never going to come in and disreplace Kane. 
uh, take his place. But what he can do is we can still fit him in. You just drop Kane that little bit deeper into a seat, see uh, centre attack midfielder, which he probably will end up dropping to later on in his career anyway. You put Danny Ings in front of him and just have Harry Kane feeding him. Have Harry Kane feeding him, son. Hopefully we have a new option on the right, but if not, Stevie B. I'll be absolutely fired. So this but whole crack, this whole crack of people telling me strikers don't want to come because you have Harry Kane there. Now the way Jose Mourinho has evolved Harry Kane's game, it means we've allowed now for another striker to come in and that can play in front of Kane, just up ahead of him, and get Kane to drop deeper. But yeah. like I, I don't think if Ings comes in that he's going to be a starting player. If Carlos Vinicius can't nail down a place in the starting eleven, I don't see why Danny Ings would. Um, <laughs> Holly uh, Agumbar saying, as much as I hate Southampton, Ings is class. Plus, he was born in the same hospital as me. Uh, Ings wants Champions League football. Sonny and Ings up top, and Kane sat behind. Lovely stuff. Um, thanks for joining us, Holly. Definitely really a solution. But yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't think Danny Ings is a starting player. He, he apparently wants Champions League football, which I think is fair enough because he's, you know, he had that chance earlier in his career. Uh, injuries kind of hindered his his development at Liverpool, and he he went elsewhere for game time. And now he's showing just how good he is. He's putting them in the back of the net consistently for Southampton. And maybe he wants that last go at Champions League football. Yeah. But I, I think he'd know that whatever team he goes to in the Champions League, if it is an English team, he's not going to get starting football. He's not going to play regular football. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't think... That is I don't true. Think to, uh, Rob Hogan said a while ago, you know, uh, it changed our dynamic. We'd need to become a 4-2-4 uh, formation. Uh, he said, with Kane playing behind Ings, son on the left, and someone needs to nail down the right-hand side. But I don't... I, I just don't think he'd be a starting player for us. And if he is being brought in to be a starter, I don't want him. But if he is brought in to be an impact sub, 100% get him in. I, I, I just Do any of you think he could actually be a starting player for us? No. No, no I don't. But the I'll thing die, is, I'll he die. does give us that option. That if we do, we, we can drop Kane back and play in as a top. We can even do it with Vinny now. There is that option. I, that's what I've been calling for. I've called for us to do it with Vin Vinicius. I have. But at the same time, why Kane's firing and banging in the goals he does? You don't drop him and you don't drop him deeper either. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying I would. I've been what I've been calling for is to. See, I know Danny Ings can't play out wide, but I'm saying with Vinicius he can actually play out. I don't think a lot of people know this, but Vinicius can actually play out he wide. Can play out well. wide, yeah. So what I've been calling for for look before before Bergwijn sort of came into form because Bergwijn, as we know, we look a lot better with him in the team. But before that, bro, I was saying why don't we just why don't we stick Vinicius on the left wing, put Son on the right, and then obviously Kane up top and see how that goes. Maybe it will add more goals um, to sort of take the burden off Kane and Son a bit. But That's the thing something is, you're that... not buying Vinicius to play out or win. You're buying him to, to develop him as a... As yeah, a I know. I know. I'm right? just saying. So I, just, I, know. I was left. just saying, I want to see us give it a go and see if it doesn't yeah. work, it doesn't work. But if it works, then great. That's what... But now, look, yeah. Bergwijn's come into form. So, as, as we know, we look a lot better with him in the team. So, I think it's... Uh... I mean, yeah. as far as the thing, I, I kind of agree with you, Matty. Uh, you know, I think the whole thing, you know, I can see where, where David is coming from. But at the end of the day, we, you know, we also don't want to shoehorn players in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just because, no, you know, if you're not good enough, you know what I mean? Like if Kane is best playing up front, I'd rather play Kane up front because he's the best at it. You know what I mean? And if, mm. Yeah, he's the best in the world at doing it. So I'd rather just put Kane up front and let him be the best in the world at doing what he does. You know what I mean? On the flip side oh, David, of that, I, David, David, I only, just, know, I only just noticed your name now, the GOAT. The banner's up along. We haven't been able to see it. Um, but look, uh, that, that's it uh, in terms of uh, incomings for, for potential incomings for Spurs in this January or the, uh, the summer window. In a second, we're going to get on to uh, some potential departures. Uh, but I do want to say, anyone, if you are new to the channel, if you are enjoying this stream, uh, if you want more... Uh, you know, transfer talk live streams, breaking news videos, live watch alongs, game previews, reviews, podcasts, anything you could want from a Spurs channel, make sure to smash that subscribe button down below. And if you want access to exclusive content and to exclusive member only call in shows before every single watch along, make sure to hit that join button down below and everything will be explained for you down there. Um, also, check out David's, uh, chat, David's channel linked in the description below and I'll add uh, Charlie to there soon as well um, if you do want to uh, take a look at that. But on the, on the term of departures, um, Actually, first of all, uh, one potential return. It's it's neither a departure nor a return. Uh, but uh, according to Dan Kilpatrick of the mm. Evening Standard, he says uh, Tottenham Hotspur looked into the prospect of recalling Oliver Skip from his loan at North City this month. In the end, Spurs eventually decided against the idea. Uh, we all saw Steve Hitchin at uh, at Carrow Road last night for an Archer's game against Bristol City. Was he watching Skip? Was he looking at no. any other player? We know David has a theory on that. Uh, but I want to say, ask first of all, guys, uh, we start with you, uh, David. Would you like to see Oliver Skip recalled? To be honest with you, I think he'd be doing. I think they'd be doing Spurs a massive favour to recall him. Even when he got his few minutes in the Premier League, he looked like he definitely could cut it at this level. 
And for me, he's going to offer more than what Winks is offering us. For me, 100%. I call him back, and I think I think you play him. But at the same time, only call him back if you're if you're ready to offload Winks. There's no point calling him back to sit there and uh, and and be behind Winks in the pecking order. There's no point. You may as well leave him out alone. But just on my theory, I actually think that look, he could have sat at home, watched the game on Sky last night, and, and watched or watched Charlie skip. My theory is that he was either looking at Buendia, Todd Cantwell, or Max Aaron's. Because uh, and for me, the reason why I think that is I think the Deli Ali deal probably is going to go go ahead. It might have a bit of money to spend. And for me, Todd Cantwell will be a real shout because I know people want to live up to this homegrown quarter shit. So, you know, he, he'd definitely be a great shout. David, you like, you like, uh, like a lot of, you, you like Max Aarons a lot. I was going to say, you quite like him a lot. I, do you have anything to say on him as well? Um, yeah, I, I'd like him to come in at Tottenham. I think he'd give. I think he. I think he. Eventually, over the course of the rest of this season, I think he'd easily display sorry or Doherty. I really do. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Spurs looking at Buendia. We've looked at him before. A lot of other clubs have looked he's, at him. He's the guy also looking at. He's a replacement for Deli Ali, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen either. I think as well in terms in terms of young right backs. I think right back is something we could revisit in the summer because of um, Oreo sort of going into the last year of his contract and Doherty hasn't been good enough season. So I wouldn't be entirely surprised if a right back is brought in in the summer. I think again, Max Aaron's as I, I heard the rumours they there. We haven't really seen them for a while. They've been sort of a while back. He's been there's Lamptey. Lamptey is. For me, I'd really like Lamptey of Brighton. I think Fire. Lamptey is quality. He is. I've seen he's, he scored against us, obviously. Um, and I think Aaron's and Lamptey, I think they're two players there that the club probably like because of the, again, the I home think you're going to more for Lamptey than you will Max Aaron's yeah, though. Probably, yeah. Really? I, think, I, I don't know. I think... I think if Brian gets relegated, I think I think I think you can. You <laughs> reminded me of that. The, 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 David knows. Yeah, the, no. the tie uh, video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, but I'm just saying, if Brian does get relegated, I think we can get a good price for Lamptey compared yeah. to Aaron. Why not? I think to be fair, out of Aaron, out of what both of them in the Premier League, I've probably seen more in Lamptey, if you ask me. But Aaron's look, he's a decent player. I saw him against us; he looked all right. But I think Lamptey probably edges it for me. I'd say the thing is, Lamptey plays in a better Brighton back line than what Norwich ever had in the Premier League. And for me, mm -hmm. I honestly think there's a lot more potential in Max Aaron's than what there is in, in Lamptey. Honestly, I, yeah, I, I, think, do I think Lamptey in the future will end up moving to be a right winger. Whereas I think Max Aarons will end up staying right back for the rest of his career. And for me, he played in such a worse team, but he was their best player last yep. year, in my opinion, outside Wendy. No, that's so true. Me, it's definitely, it's definitely close. Definitely close. Yeah, definitely close to me. I think they're two very good young players with a lot of potential in both of them. Yeah, uh, just before we move on to uh, departures, Louis Landers, thank you very much for becoming a YouTube channel member. That is massively, massively appreciated. Um, anyone else, if you do want to become a member, uh, hit the join button down below and everything will be explained for you there. Um, I just want to uh, give a quick shout out to all of our channel members. I have to take a deep breath before it now. Um, we have uh, Ratty Star, Jeremy Smith, Arthur Everett, uh, Paul Markey, Premier Hotspur TV, Dara O'Flanagan, Rob Hogan, Deck W, Paranormal Frank, James Watson, Haytham Albatashi, Saro Enul, Alan Clark, Martin Mangan, DJ Samuel, Kyle Patrick Vineyard, Dolby Skills, Jiminy, Kaylee Lowe, Christopher W, Eunice, Spartan 7 Gaming, F Dog AM, The Danish Shade, Liam Donovan, Bradley Coombs, A Cohn, Wayne Bonner, and Louis Landers. Uh, so thank you to everyone, and I mean uh, each and every one of you. Uh, thank you so much for becoming a channel member and for supporting the channel. Uh, I hope I'm uh, doing enough for you in return. And there will be extra exclusive content coming for channel members in the in the coming weeks, coming months. Uh, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. Um, again, if you are interested, hit that join button down below, um, and everything will be explained to you there, uh, down there. Starting at just one pound ninety nine per month, um, I'd really appreciate it if if you uh, had a look there. Um, uh, update on Eric Lamella. Uh, there's been talk in the last week or two that uh, it, it was basically confirmed that Eric Lamella would be leaving in the summer. However, Fabrizio Romano via the K Galazzo podcast has said Eric Lamella will stay at Tottenham surely. He doesn't want to leave the club. He is so happy. He went on to say there's nothing said in stone for him to leave in the summer. Um, it's it seemed, Those reports seem to be uh, a little bit premature. Uh, we start with you, Marcelo. Are you happy to see Lamella stay? Or do you think no. he is a bit of that deadwood that we could have or maybe yes, should have no. done? He has to go. I rather I rather sell Lamella than than Lucas. Although I think I rate Lamella more than Lucas. I think Lamella is a better footballer than Lucas. Lucas at least can get in the pitch. And for me, there's no point in keeping a player that can't even get in the pitch. If he's injured, he, he he's injured every season. He's practically he's literally practically getting paid, you know, welfare check every season. You know what I mean? He's really just sitting in his room just getting paid. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't play, so why are we paying for a player that doesn't play? It doesn't make no, it doesn't make any sense. He has to go in the summer. 
It, it has to go in the summer. I'm sorry. I love Lamella. Nothing against him as a player. I think he's a good player, but injuries and lack of consistency. Sorry, gotta go. David, what's making this? Yeah, look, I love Lamella. I have made no secret. I think I think he does offer a lot to Tottenham when big big, big capital letters when he gets on the pitch. For hmm. me, he's been here too long. He's pulled the wool over our eyes way too many times. He starts off well and then, you know, basically it's the same period every season. He goes disappearing, comes back towards the end of the season. It's not good enough for me. I don't think he'll leave Henry. I think if he does leave, it'll be to China. He says he loves Tottenham, but money talks. A lot of injury-prone players tend to head out to China, and I think that's where you're going to see him head next. I want him gone. I want the money reinvested. I want the wages reinvested. I want the signing on fee or that we would be giving him for a new contract reinvested. So for me... I think we need it's time to cut our losses. We have to start being rootless. Football's a rootless game. Let's start being rootless in the market and let's get some of these dead weight. Charlie, your thoughts on Villa? Yeah, I agree. I think it's just I've said I said it in the summer. I think it's just time to go. Look, I love Lamella. I absolutely love the guy. I think he's perfect for Mourinho. I think he's perfect in terms of desire, his passion, his um, a bit even ability as well. I do think he has something in him. However, it's just when he's on the pitch, he's never on the pitch. He's It's the same story every season, right? He'll start off the season well, bag a couple goals, and then he'll get injured out of nowhere. We won't even see it. It'll be behind the scenes. And then he, we won't see him for four months. So for me, look, been here about eight years now. I think it's just time to move on. Time to move on. Sell him, maybe get a different, maybe get a new winger and go and, go and get someone like Leon Bailey or someone like that. And I think, yeah, just time to cut our losses with Lamella. It's just, it's just time to move on. It's, it's just come to an end with Lamella, I think. Well, being, being honest, if this was at, if he was at any other club, he's lucky he's at Tottenham because if he was at any other club, he wouldn't have lasted eight years with his yeah. injury record. Would have been no. shipped off long ago. Yeah, he mm. would. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at um, look at look at a city. City are even thinking about selling Aguero, and Aguero is like a legend. Like you know, you know what, what I mean? I I saw a stat today which absolutely blew my mind. The last time Sergio Aguero scored a Premier League goal was a year ago today. Yeah, three hundred and sixty-five days since Sergio Aguero Ooh, scored a Premier believe, League goal in one that. minute Sheffield yeah. United. I honestly could not believe that, and it just goes to show how much injuries can can really affect a player. And I think we've yep. been lucky that Lamella, when he has kind of come back onto the pitch after his injuries, he's he's still kind of performed to the same standard. And he's a really he's a real Mourinho player. But injuries can just they can just take so much out of a person. But 365 days since Aguero scored a Premier League goal, um, it, it absolutely baffles me. Um, someone else I want to talk about quickly is Sergio Regulon. Uh, we know he, of course, uh, Real Madrid have the first refusal thing in that contract with the the buyback clause. They've now completed the signing of David Alaba. He will be joining them, uh, I think, in the summer. Uh, now, Alaba has been playing as a centre-back for Bayern Munich lately after the, the meteoric rise of, of uh, Alfonso Davis. But it seems as though Alaba kind of forced this move out of Bayern because he wants to play as a left-back. He's not doing very well in centre-back. I've, I've heard from Bayern fans who've said, you know, if someone did sign him as a centre-back, it would be an absolute joke. He is a left-back. So maybe that is why Real Madrid have signed him. Marcelo, does this mean we're keeping regular? Yes. I already said it, bro. We're keeping. Nah, listen, I already, I, I already Please. said it. We're keeping Regulon as long as Zinedine Zidane is manager. We have Regulon in the bag. Re- Zidane doesn't rate Regulon. He doesn't fit Regulon's system. That's why he kept like loaning Regulon, moving him to places. He just doesn't. It's not quality. It's not anything like that. It's just that Regulon doesn't fit his system. Doesn't fit his vision, which is fair enough. So as long as Zidane is there, we have Regulon. And as far as I'm concerned, the buyback clause is only for what two seasons. So they got this summer and then next summer. I got some news here. I got some breaking news here. It's not Tottenham related. However, it's funny. You're going to laugh at this. From the BBC, actually, it says, Martin Odegaard would prefer to draw him Real Sociedad over Arsenal. You love to see it. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing? They're flying this year. They're flying yeah, they're this fine. year. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, they're flying this year. I don't want to play against them in the Europa League. If there's one team, I'm, I'm hesitant to they're play. Playing, in the they're Europa playing League. Man U. They're playing yeah. Man U in the fir- round of 32. So Listen, I, think I, think, U, you know? I think I think Man U is in a big trouble, bro. They're, they're they're the favorites, in my opinion, to win it. I mean, aside from us, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um. Look, there's no better way to end the stream than a, a good old discussion about Deli Ali. Uh, Fritzi Romano via the, the Here We Go podcast has <laughs> said go. Uh, right now the decision from Delhi is that he wants to go. The decision from the Tottenham board is he can go. Mourinho is okay with him leaving. PSG and Pochettino want him. He did go on to say Daniel Levy is still reluctant and has not it's yet the given the green light. Problem. Via the K Galazzo podcast, he said at the moment there's a technical problem between Deli Ali and Mourinho. He will move on a loan with no buy option 
PSG and the player are absolutely ready. Now, this is where the this is where the disagreement comes into place. Daniel Levy is apparently open to letting Delhi Ali go, but only if he can be guaranteed that he will go permanently. So if it's a permanent deal now or if it's a loan with an obligation to buy in the summer. However, every other party is happy with a loan deal with no option to buy. So a simple loan deal with Deli Ali returning to Spurs uh, if it's this summer or next summer. Uh, Marcelo, we'll start with you. What do you make of this news and do you think we'll see this happen this window? Well, listen, thank God for Daniel Levy. He's the only angel in in this club because, listen, if we're going to sell Deli Ali, I want to sell him on the permanent. I don't want no loans, no nothing. Like, it, I'd rather just keep him because, I mean, like, we'll be losing an English player. We'll be, lo- be losing a player of quality, you know what I mean, that we should be playing more. You know, he should be playing more often, let's be real. So, like, it, it's just a lose-lose for us and a win-win for PSG. Nobody wins, you know, but PSG in this situation. So if if he is gonna go, he has to be sold permanently. And you know, what I mean, I I know you didn't want to say, it, but we got to get the right replacement. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. he, he has he has he, like for me, I rather just keep Delhi or make make an agreement where you know, like they did with I think with Alaba, where um we will we'll sell him, but he goes in the summer. You know what I mean? I'll be okay with that deal. I'd rather just keep Delhi Ali for the rest of the season than then let him go. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, I don't like it. I don't like the what deal. What do you think, David? Yeah, you know where I stand on this. I've already spoken about this before. Don't want to loan him out. There's no point loaning him out. I don't care what's best for Delhi. At the end of the day, we're Tottenham Hotspur. Like Marcelo said, the only people that are winning out of this is PSG. I'd rather mm-hmm. keep him and rather see if Marino can work with him and get him to turn around. He's not a true problem and get him onto the field and get him going rather than send him off to Poch and help out PSG. Um, you know what I mean? For me, I, yeah, that's where I'm at. You either sell him and reinvest or you, you, you just don't loan him out. You just do not loan him out in the January transfer window. You just don't do it. But I get he's yeah. not part of Mourinho's plans, but the thing is, Mourinho can work with him. It's as simple as that. And uh, just quickly, just before we move on to Charlie, um, it's been funny enough that you brought that up. And, uh, me and Marcelo are just after dropping and um, doing our first recording, our first episode of the Delhi In, Delhi Out on um, the Spurs view, the opposite side of the world. So that will be coming out more or less straight after this, Matty. So just anyone that's Fantastic. watching it, if, if you want any more on this, get over Give it a watch. Yeah, and just on that point, David, about you saying you know, we don't want to send him over to to Mauricio Pochettino. I'm in I'm in exactly the same boat. I I kind of said early on that I thought it would be good for for him to go to to PSG and to to kind of have that time where he could uh, kind of regain a sense of confidence, is the way I described it. But it, even yeah. though it would be a, a false sense of confidence, because at the end of the day he's playing against terrible teams over in the French league. Yeah. I thought it would be a good thing to do because he could get that kind of sense of uh, accomplishment, that sense of confidence back, and he could come and he could utilise that in this first team. But now Pochettino is the manager there. And if you're sending Deli Ali from an environment, which for him, in a way, can be kind of toxic, uh, the fact that he's not getting the team, he's a uh, massive yeah. disagree- disagreement with the manager. And I'd assume there are disagreements with the players there as well, because a lot of players seem to be buying into Mourinho's tactics. If you send him back to that situation with Poch, where he thrives, where he will absolutely love every second of every day, it's going to be even worse when he comes back to Spurs. So I think the worst thing we could do right now is loan him to PSG. Yeah. But not only that, yeah. Matty. Look, we know he has a bit of a part lifestyle off the pitch. We do. Okay? Now, That's what do PSG the do the whole time? They always hold parties. They're over there smoking at parties with the owners, sitting there having a few drinks with the owners. Every single fucking chance they get. Now, it's the worst environment. He's be sending a player that can't get onto the pitch because of his attitude problems, because he's lazy and because he likes party. It's to send them over to PSG, where all they do is party. It's not easy over there. All they do is party. It's the wrong destination for Dali Ali to be going. And plus, like, at the end of the day, I agree with everything you say, Matty. Look, look, at the end of the day, look, he's a man. He's 24, 25, whatever he is, 26. Like, the thing is, like, he, he shouldn't need a slap on the back and a... And a, and a and you know, compliments the whole time to get himself out in the field. There comes a point in himself where he has to want to do it for himself. And I think that's what Mourinho is waiting for to click with him. But we'll wait and see. Yeah. Charlie, any thoughts? Yeah, look, I agree. I think a loan for Delhi doesn't make sense. I think as as David said, like, what's the point in a loan? Like, and as you said as well, Matt, going into PSG with Poch where it's sort of he feels comfortable, it would be worse for him coming back to Spurs. So I don't think a loan makes any sense. I think, for me, the only way Delhi goes is that if it's a permanent deal so we can get that money reinvest. However, personally, I want him to stay for now, at least, because um, I think, as I said, I wouldn't be against him staying because I think, yes, there's a player in there somewhere. We know the qualities he has. And I think, look, 
I don't know what it, I don't know what it's going to take for him to get it back. I think at the moment I can't see how he gets it back. That's one of it's the big issues. No yeah, it's, it's up to him. It's up to him at the end of the day, and I think that's been a problem. I've said all season. I just can't see a way for him to get it back. So look, we can only hope, and I think. But for me, a loan just doesn't make sense. If he's going to go, it should be permanent, not a loan. That's the for me a loan. Yeah, it just it just makes no sense to me. If it's if it's not going to be a permanent, he might as well stay here for me. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so look, we'll, we'll have to wait and see um, how this one pans out. Anyway, lads, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to everyone who has watched. Um, it's been a fantastic stream and a fantastic discussion, as always. I'm going to say it one more time. If you are new to the channel and you want more Tottenham Hotspur transfer, co- transfer talk content, the Tottenham Fan Voice podcast and live watch-alongs, please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below. Uh, hit the like button if you have enjoyed this stream. It really helps me out uh, and share this out if you haven't already. Uh, David's channel is linked in the description below if you want to go and uh, check that out as well. I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, I assume it's going to be a fantastic show with himself and Marcelo there with the uh, Spurs view from the opposite side of the world. Uh, David has some fantastic content coming out on his channel soon uh, with the, the Spurs stories as well, which I had the, the privilege of being on. I think that's out next Monday, um, David, is it? Yeah, while we're here, your Spurs story is dropping next Monday. So all of the Matty Army, make sure you filming, get over filming. and get we're out. Filming to filming today. Me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be filming Charlie's today as well. Um, so look, make sure you look out for them. Yeah, Ma- Ma- uh, Matty, yours is dropping Monday. For everyone that wants to know more about Matt behind behind the boy you see on the camera on YouTube, get over and check him out and find out his story. Marcelo's will be dropping the week after that. So make sure you tune in for that. I know a lot of you like Marcelo, so that'll be dropping. I'm going to be recording one with Charlie today and dropping that soon as well. And Come as well, on. me and Matty have a segment coming up on my channel every Sunday where we'll be giving you a little news show about Tottenham. So make sure you tune in to that. Um, and yeah, that's everything coming up on my channel. Thanks for that, mate. But you're by Matty. Um, everyone's here to watch you. So like I said, if you enjoy that, make sure you get over Monday and get over and watch Matty's story. It's a very good one. I have to say it's a good one. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, I've never enjoyed recording a video as much as I did that one with David. So it's six o'clock next Monday, is it? Uh, yeah, it'll be about six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock Monday. Yeah, yeah sorry, six o'clock. Yeah. So everyone, uh, absolutely uh, make sure to go over and uh, check that uh, check that out today or uh, next Monday. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, Charlie, what's coming up on your channel soon? Uh, yeah, so look, of course, this normal content and stuff. Hopefully, I'll be bringing some transfer news videos as well soon if we do get some breaking news and stuff as well as the usual content. we got some content coming out before the Wickham game. Of course, there'll be even more content coming out before the Liverpool game as well, some live streams and some reviews and previews. So, yeah, anyone watching, if you want to check my channel out, feel free. Um, you don't have to, of course, um, but if you if you want to go and check out some more Tottenham content, um, yeah, head over to Charlie THFC. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, everyone who's joined us, everyone who's liked, subscribed, and uh, to Louis Landers, our new channel member, uh, the, the Danny Shade for the Super Chats as well. Thank you so much for the support, and as always, thanks for watching. Come on. Come on. Don't part the bus, Jose. <laughs>